the angels that Isaiah saw. In this video, we will talk about the events when Isaiah was called to be a prophet. God's people were called in a variety of ways. Consider Moses, Amos, and Jonah. Each of these calls in the Bible was unique. God's calls are unique and distinct. Isaiah was preaching some difficult truths from the beginning. He was announcing God's judgment on the nation. Isaiah had one of the toughest assignments of all the prophets. But of course, if he hadn't gone through with it, we wouldn't have this amazing book. He didn't know that centuries ahead, this book would be an inspiration. But in his lifetime, he was a failure. Nobody listened. They just got harder and harder for 40 years. In his sermon, Isaiah included some woes. He was implying that people's moral understanding were skewed. Who are you to come around here preaching all these woes to us? I imagine the people of Judah saying to Isaiah, Who do you believe you are? Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 to 22, New King James Version. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to men mighty at drinking wine. Woe to men valiant for mixing intoxicating drink. Isaiah looks upward, inward, and outward. Part 1. The Upward Look Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, New King James Version In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. With the upward look, Isaiah saw the Lord. We know that Uzziah was one of the great kings. His death was a time of national mourning. Times of national crisis are opportunities for people to have a new experience with God. Isaiah went into the temple. The earthly throne was empty, but Isaiah saw God on his throne. Regardless of what goes on down here, God is still on his throne. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2, New King James Version. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. Isaiah witnessed the Lord's majesty. The term seraphim literally translates as to burn. Seraphim are clearly a high order of angelic beings. They are in the Lord's presence. The burning ones remind us that a cold religion is a logical contradiction. The closer you get to the Lord Jesus Christ, the hotter your heart will become. Seraphim possess six wings. Two of them covered their faces in awe of the Lord's presence. Two of them covered their feet, demonstrating humility in the presence of the Lord. Two were used for flight, ready to run errands for the Lord. Revelation 4 New King James Version After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne, in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and on the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, 
and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, New King James Version And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. Why do the seraphim exclaim, Holy, holy, holy? This repetition emphasizes our God's triune holiness. To set apart is what the word holy means. God is the ultimate set-apart one, and this is the truth. The vision of God's holiness gripped Isaiah's heart so tightly that he never recovered. The phrase, the holy one, appears 27 times in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4, New King James Version. Alas, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a brood of evildoers, children who are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backward. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 19, New King James Version. That say, Let him make speed and hasten his work, that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come, that we may know it. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 20, New King James Version. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as have escaped of the house of Jacob will never again depend on him who defeated them, but will depend on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The manifestation of God's holiness in the earth is the manifestation of God's glory. What we see of God is His glory. God desires for us to be overwhelmed by His holiness. Part 2. The Inward Look Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5, New King James Version So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Invariably, only when we truly see the Lord do we truly see ourselves. I'm a goner, Isaiah responded. I'm exhausted. A person who has a clear, true vision of the Holy Lord will invariably become aware of his or her own sinfulness and inadequacy. When anyone in the Bible became aware of God's presence, they immediately felt the full weight of sin. Abraham, Jacob, Job, and Simon Peter. We see how sinful we are when we get close to the Lord. Genesis chapter 18, verse 27, New King James Version. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed now, I who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 10, New King James Version. In a year and some days you will be troubled, you complacent women, for the vintage will fail, the gathering will not come. Luke chapter 5, verse 8, New King James Version. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5 to 6, New King James Version. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the tongs from the altar. Woe is me, exclaimed Isaiah, and his anguish prompted the angel to say, Behold, 
Getting rid of sin is a difficult, painful, and time-consuming process. The hot coal of the angel represents God's remedy for sin, the hot coal that came from the altar of Calvary's sacrifice to cleanse us of our sins. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, New King James Version. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. Isaiah got a call. I have a task for someone, God explained. Who's going? You can almost see Isaiah jumping up and down, waving his hand and exclaiming, Here I am! Please send me a message. Because there are two Hebrew words in there, this literally means, Hear me. It is your availability, not your ability, that is important. What God will do with you is beyond your imagination if you simply make your life available to Him. Part 3. The Outward Look Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9-10, to 10, New King James Version And He said, Go and tell this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull, and their ears heavy, and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. Isaiah was now prepared to address the people. He received a message from the Lord. This passage appears six times in the New Testament. It was quoted by Jesus. Just keep preaching the message, even if people won't listen. God was telling Isaiah, did you know that hearing God's Word preached can be hazardous? If people hear it but reject it, their level of responsibility rises. People respond to the gospel message as if it were a matter of life or death. Matthew chapter 13, verse 14 to 15, New King James Version. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive, for the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 11 to 12, New King James Version. Then I said, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities are laid waste and without inhabitant, the houses are without a man, the land is utterly desolate. The Lord has removed men far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. How long? Isaiah inquired. Isaiah, your job will be difficult, but your assignment is to preach the message. God basically said, you are not responsible for the message's response. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 13, New King James Version. But yet a tenth will be in it, and will return, and be for consuming. As a tear binth tree, or as an oak, whose stump remains when it is cut down, so the holy seed shall be its stump. God ended on a hopeful note. You cut down a tree, but later on you may discover a small sprout that grew from the stump of that tree. God promised that a remnant would live. You go out and you witness. Some receive your witness and are saved. Others do not receive the message and are not saved. You haven't failed. All God asked you to do is go and tell. That's your assignment. Isaiah's call came during a visit to the temple. He had a vision and was overcome by the holiness of the Lord. His age is not given in the text, but he was probably in his late teens or early twenties. From this moment on, Isaiah used a name for God that was not used by anyone else, the Holy One of Israel. This name occurs nearly 50 times all the way through his book and in both parts of it. As soon as he caught a sight of God's holiness, 
he felt unclean and wanted to leave the temple. It is interesting that he felt that his lips were unclean. He had the remarkable experience of an angel flying with the live, red-hot coal to cauterize his lips. Some think this was an imaginary vision, but it really happened. Throughout his life, Isaiah would tell people that his scarred mouth was the result of God burning his lips.